Feelings are very powerful experiences, and there has been a lot of argument and disagreement about how they're produced. Where do subjective feelings come from? There are four prominent theories that have tried to explain this. First is the James Lang somatic theory, named after William James and Carl Lang. The term somatic means body, which is the starting point of the creation of feelings according to this view. Basically, the idea is that we experience emotion internally in response to physiological changes. Keep in mind that this should happen for positive emotions as well, but it's much easier to demonstrate with negative emotions. Say you see something frightening, like approaching zombies. The James Lang theory suggests that first, your body reacts by pumping up heart rate and respiration and other physiological changes, and this gets detected by the brain and creates a subjective emotional experience, in other words, feelings of fear. This theory is somewhat counterintuitive because it places feelings last as a response. This theory is supported by the fact that our bodily responses can feed back to our experiences. In fact, people report feeling happier when holding a pen in their teeth, which activates smiling muscles, compared to holding a pen in their lips, which activates frowning muscles. Give it a try and see how you feel. The Cannon-Bard theory, named after Walter Cannon and Philip Bard, states that feelings occur independent of emotional expression. In other words, there is no correlation with physiological state and emotional responses happen in parallel. Support for this theory comes from research showing that there are multiple parallel pathways in the brain that respond to emotional triggers and that the pathway through the thalamus leads to a whole host of physical and physiological changes, while the pathway through the cortex is important for the subjective emotional experience. The two-factor theory of Schachter and Singer states that our conscious experience of emotion is determined by both an awareness of what's happening in the body and a cognitive appraisal of the situation. In other words, we make a decision about which emotion we're experiencing based upon the explanation that best fits the circumstance. So, if you see approaching zombies, you don't just robotically respond with fear, rather you look at what's happening in your body and also make some sense of what's happening in the situation. Sometimes, you might not be all that afraid of zombies. For example, if you saw approaching zombies on your favorite zombie series, you might feel your heart racing, but this would also be paired with an appraisal of the situation. In my case, because I'm a big fan of the zombie genre, this would lead me to feel very happy rather than terrified, which is how I'd feel if I ever saw zombies in real life. In contrast to Schachter and Singer's two-factor theory, Lazarus proposed the cognitive mediational theory, which places cognitive appraisal as the first step in the emotion process. Once the individual makes an appraisal of the situation and ability to cope, this can trigger all of the emotional responses. This theory is supported by the fact that different people respond to the same antecedent stimulus, in this case zombies, with different reactions. Lazarus and others showed that the appraisal process has a big impact on whether a stimulus triggers an emotion and how intense that emotion will be. Although neither of these theories explains all aspects of subjective emotions, each has its strengths and weaknesses, so modern views of emotion incorporate evidence from all of them.